Hey, welcome in everybody to the Sports Fanatic News, the grittiest take Flyers post-game show, as we were able to have Brian Elliott, Moose, Yay! as he kept, made some big saves on 23 of 23, and we had the guys step up that were away yet again after G stepped up the other night, we had the others step up tonight. I am, of course, Joe Boric, Pro Joe with Steel Flyer. Steel, how are you doing today after this great Oh, game? man. I am just pumped, especially after a great game like today. This is exactly what the Flyers needed. By the way, the grittiest take, if you can't tell, we got to be rocking the... Here's Nitty Gritty. Yes, got to be rocking the shirt, baby. Lance, Jamie, Arif, um Caitlin and everybody over there that does all the great stuff for Flyers Nitty Gritty, definitely check them out. But let's go right into recapping the goals because it gets to compliment two guys that are clearly players of the game with this game. And one is Travis Sanheim, who Jim Jackson said it at the forefront of the post game on the crossover they do now that they, for away games, oddly enough, call them in the studio in the world. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, but uh, he said Sandheim was all over the ice. He's clearly a star of the game, and he was on that play. He pitched in, and that's what he used to do with the Phantoms. He used to always pitch in that they had to hone him back a bit, and then he able to adjust his game. But now it seems like he's able to do the best of both worlds a bit. He stole the puck. He was able to fight through traffic, get an assist to Coots, who had it bounce off of a defenseman for that shot that was able to get through Hudden. But what did you think of that play? That was just a brilliant play by Sanheim, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you know, I, I like that he's starting to get into the gritty areas. I like the fact that he's starting to get more physical. Um, he was one of the players that I noticed in this game as well, too, uh, as far as how he played. And that play was just phenomenal. Um, you know, that's the kind of stuff that you're kind of you're hoping to see from these guys. You know, um, you're, you're looking at guys to come in and play their second and third years and you're looking for that improvement. You're looking for that next level of play, that next level of awareness, that next, you know, you're looking for improvements. And every time I think you see Sandheim, you're starting to see him is improving every single game. He's getting better. He's starting to get it. We know it takes defensemen a little longer to get a hold of the game and get their game honed in. It takes a little longer for defensemen. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, I think he's a guy, like I said, he always pressed a lot in the minors that they told him to hone it back a bit. Then he became a great all-around guy where now he's able to blend in both very well which is kind of the same thing as, like I said before, the best of both worlds. He's able to have good defense but also push on offense, and that's what's going to make him be the best successful player he can be and hit the highest level he can hit in the NHL, blending them both because he has the offensive skill set. You yeah. saw it coming through the ranks with him at every level yeah. and in the AHL, and you saw it at spurts in the NHL this far, and you were able to see it today because he has a strong body when he pitches in we saw, and we'll get to Ghost in a second, how good Ghost was able to play, but <laughs> we saw the ability of uh, Sandheim when he's able to pitch in. He has a big body that can force people off the puck. That's something Ghost doesn't, so he even has an extra element exactly. when he pitches in. Exactly. That's the other thing I like about him, too, is that he's starting to come into, into his physical game. He's starting to get that a little bit more, and, and you're also starting to see him play that more – 200 foot game and he's making better decisions without the puck okay and i think that's what's making his game climb into that where he's getting better every time because he's making decisions not only with the puck but he's making better decisions without the puck he's putting exactly. himself he's putting himself in areas that he should be in he's playing his position where he should be i mean Go figure! He's anticipating the play very well. Exactly. Exactly. Now, that's the why, next yeah. guy we will get into is the other defenseman that's been stepping up in bunches, especially these last two games. Two goals and two games for Ghost, showing flashbacks of the 2018 and before prior Goss despair. Yeah. Uh, you had the great play from Cooch. Cooch yet again getting it to JVR, who had a nice backhand oh, pass JVR a little bit a in front of Ghost, too. but he was able to uh, anchor the pass. And then shoot one that he actually openly admitted, like Jonesy said he would not do, um, that he meant to shoot that bar down, but was able to miss it and get it go through the wickets of Carter Hutton. Um, 
which <laughs> Josie openly said he would just lie about that. Yeah, again, yeah, yeah. I completely meant to do that. But uh, anyway, what did you think of that play and the fact that guys that uh, recently came back and Cooch was able to contribute to that play again and JV, or no, excuse me, not JVR, uh, JVR got the assist, but Ghost, who's recently coming back to his form, is able to contribute to that again. I, I like the fact that the Flyers are now starting to be able to put a, a full team together and rolling four lines. Yeah. Okay. And, and and we talked about that in our wrap-up show with Jim, and he even mentioned it today, and we're going to have to mention it now. The fact that we're getting these guys back, and, and he, you, yep. you know, you even said that A.V. mentioned that in his in his uh, postgame, um, calling it the COVID line, all the guys that came back from COVID on a line. You know what I mean? Yeah. With Lindblom and Voracek uh, and, and Lodge. Yeah, Lodge. Oh, my gosh! Oh, that line I- was tremendous. Can I see some more of that, please? <laughs> yeah, I don't think they're going to tinker that line at all. And the big thing is you got TK coming back, who was actually struggling a little, actually a lot towards the end before he went out with COVID. Yeah. Butterman's actually filled him pretty well. Trawinski did good as well. Really well. You're now showing you have depth because Butterman's been in 11 games. I think today would have been his 12. Um, so he's been playing good. very well in that handful yes. of games. Uh, now a dozen of games, so... Uh, he's been good in that, and I always have liked what I saw from him defensively. He's a guy, defense, uh, physicality, uh, checking you along the boards, four check first guy, but he does it in all the right facets. And Knack, who stepped up before at another uh, solid game today, but obviously he just wasn't as noticeable because he wasn't up on one of the top two lines like he had to be uh, in the past couple games. I'll tell you what I really like. I really like the fact that they put Nolan Patrick on the wing with uh, Giroux. Same here. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Rick uh, going with the confidence of spreading his well. He has he hasn't necessarily been on the score sheet, but he has been involved. He has been uh playing very well. And, you know, he reminds me of Raffle from uh, the last year or the year before, where he was doing all the right things, he just wasn't showing up on the score sheet. That you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like he's getting some shots. He's getting some good chances. You know what I mean? They're giving him some opportunities. He's getting some power play time. And, and you know, he's getting his shots. He's playing with Drew. So, you, you know, you can't say he's not playing with good people. Um, so he's definitely getting his chances. It's just he hasn't quite hit the score sheet yet. You know what I mean? Um, but I really like the improved overall play of the team where you're starting to see the Flyers are – uh, shooting first, they're getting that shooting mentality yes. first, and and they're out shooting teams now. This is the third game in a row. Thirty nine. Exactly. This is the third game in a row where the Flyers have outshot their opponents. And oh, oh, I think we might have. Uh, oh. Go ahead. You're back. Yeah, okay. Third game in a row where the Flyers have outshot uh the opponent. And and that's to me that's amazing right there. That says something right there. And even uh uh the guys uh tonight uh announcing the game or today announcing the game, uh Keith Jones and uh, Jim Jackson were saying too that it seems like the team is a little bit more up on their skates. They seem to be with a shot a shoot first mentality. Okay? And that's something that I noticed as well too where the, the fact that we're out shooting teams and and we're not just playing hot potato with the puck during power plays. We're actually getting shots exactly. on that because we're actually rotating guys down in front to, to get the screens and we're taking and them. And using sh- the defense to facilitate the offense. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So the, this whole thing, the last three games have been really good for the Flyers and I'm really liking the improved play. Yeah, and that's what we talked about on Pirlo's show and John's show. I know you guys talk about it. When teams use defense, get guys in front, use that to facilitate their offense, that's when they're at their best. And that's why teams like I did uh, for Pub Sports, there's an article that I'm going to have coming out on the most disappointing team in Vancouver and Nashville are so disappointing because they have guys that have some skill sets with that. They just, for some reason, are not running a system efficient enough to utilize everyone's skill set to the full effectiveness. Then guys are just not playing up to the elk you want them to play. But with the Flyers, 
it's been the opposite. You have had guys step up this season when needed. Knack moved up lines recently, stepped up. Lawden, when he was in, has always stepped up. And since coming back, stepped up today. And we'll get to him, obviously, in a second. Uh, Bunneman's continued to step up, as we said. Hayes, offensively, they said they want more defensively. But we saw that the last two games. We saw Hayes step up more in the defensive end and also contribute with a goal still. So uh, it's nice to see what he's been able to do. Uh, other than passing a couple pucks into guys, Braun probably did have his better game like I know J.J. also brought up uh, today because that allowed Sandheim to have his best game and push up front because you know Braun is just a defensive defenseman sitting back there to uh, help you out if you, if uh, anything happens because all he is is a defensive defenseman at this yeah. point. So all that line kind of worked together. So maybe now you put Myers with Gus or Hag and you see yeah. what happens with that line yeah. because – as I said in my preview video, our pairs, whoever we put on the third pair, has usually been bottom grade of the league when you look at the defensive line grades of defense line. So you got to get that working. It's not a make or break, but it's something that definitely benefits. It looks solid today because that's because Gus looked decent again after having a good game last game. So if that continues, that will help. So we'll see what happens there going forward. But now we should probably move on, I would say, into the fact that this team, the big thing is the Sabres' one thing is their power play. The one thing they are great at is their power play, and we actually stopped them three times. And the one thing the Flyers are not very peachy keen on uh, this year yet is their penalty kill. Uh, we're actually 28th in the league, and we were able to stop the second best, which I think was the first best power play until we stopped them three times coming in. Yeah. Three times. What did you think of the uh, penalty kill and uh, how they were able to step up today as well? I'm going to say this. Uh, we talked about this on our Hockey Writers Inc. show with Lance Green, and he said when you have guys that are constantly in front of the net and when you have to have goalies doing this all the time, and looking around and back and forth and stuff like that. Um, that's how you get success against goalies that are really, really good, like Carter Hart. You know, and Carter Hutton is actually one of those types of goalies where he's actually a pretty darn good goalie. And we did an excellent job of getting guys in front of him, making him doing this more and more, where he had to look and pen and, and go around. And there was a lot more screens in front. And things of that nature. So especially with the power play and then the penalty kill, we were making sure that there was none of their guys in front, you know, and, and if yeah, they we were in front, cleared it out well. and, and if they were in front, they weren't there for very long, because as we all know, you can't make shots when you're on your butt. Yeah. Uh, you, Okay, the, the the defense pinched really well. I was very impressed with how well Ghost played on 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 that as well. I was very impressed with how the entire defensive core played today, especially during the penalty kill, especially against the number one power play. And now you have to take into account that they are missing Eichel, and you also yeah. have to take into account that that whole power play unit runs through him. OK, at least the top power play unit does yeah. anyway. You know what I'm saying? So they did I, stop the Flyers killer, though, because even though Skinner's been pitiful since going to Buffalo, he's always towards the Flyers and they were able to stop him today. Exactly. But a big thing we have to point out is they won all three periods again in shots, 11 to six in the first, 15 to eight in the second and 13 to nine in the third. And any big shots that were on net by the Sabres. Moose came up big, and he had another big game for us. And we won in the face-off dot, 62% to 38%. And getting possession, getting your possession numbers, obviously leads to the best chance to have some good offensive numbers. Exactly. And that was one of the things that um, I would like to point out as well, and that was pointed out in the post-game show uh, of Scott Lawton winning uh, a good percentage of his face-offs coming back from the COVID list and just lighting just it like up. Just like he is doing. Yeah. Both, yeah. Both winning a large amount of face-offs. <clears throat> exactly. So that's boating well. When, when you can be – and that's one of the things that really helped the Flyers as well, especially in the – a penalty kill was being able to win those face-offs and being able to get control of the puck and sending it down the length of the ice because you know you you can't 
it, it's tough to gather. It's tough to to get shots on goal when you have to start back at the other end of your, you know, the other the other end of your net and yeah, skate all the way back up. You know, you know what I'm saying. So that's why I yeah, I, I'm really been impressed with with how things have come together here for the Flyers as of late. Yeah, they play more physical. They just lost the hits battle by one. It was thirteen to twelve according to the stat sheet. Um, the Sabers are always a team that look to get blocks, so that was twelve to seven. The one thing that I agree with Jamie is you still got to bring down the giveaways a bit. You don't want nine giveaways, especially especially <laughs> against a Sabers esque team. Yeah, but and, uh, and Hayes was responsible for a few of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you still got to – that's why they're saying they want to see more defensively, but he still made some decent defensive plays at different times today. Okay. But now we should get into recapping the final goal, which was a great game, the return line, where Voracek made a great play off the boards in the defensive zone, kicked it up the boards, the sideboards to Limblom, who was then able to put a pass across ice right on the tape to Scott Lawton, who was able to score. Uh, what did you think of that play and all the returnees capitalizing for the goal? Wow. And it's Lawton's fifth goal of the season. Yeah. He played 14 19 tonight on the ice. It's, I, it seems like every group of players that Scott Lawton plays with, that, that line just seems to have chemistry. Okay. It doesn't matter because we saw him play with TK and, 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 uh, and Hayes, and that was a yep. good line. Okay. And so it just seems like it doesn't matter where you put, uh, Lawton, it, it, you're going to elevate those guys. You know what I mean? It just seems like that. And, and I'm really liking that. I hope that they keep this line together for at least the next game. And I hope that that I, I kind of have a feeling that that's what's going to happen because it's against the same team. So I'm hoping that AV keeps that same line together with the return unit. <laughs> yeah, no, they're going to have to. They played amazing. There's no way you can change well, that. Well, they were one. responsible for, for three points. Right, they had the the well. Lawton was uh, what uh, uh, Lawton had the goal, and then Gossespierre had the goal, and then and and then uh, Couturier had the first one. So they were responsible for three points. Uh, Lawton had the goal, and then each of them had the assists. So I mean, okay, yeah. No, Coots has had an amazing game. I would say the players of the game are definitely Couturier, Ghost. And probably tied Van Reems tight load in that line. Basically, that return line, the whole first line played amazing. Uh, those lines created a lot of chances. And then Moose played a great game. Oh, yeah. Him. but Another shutout, boy. How about that? You, anytime a goalie gets a shutout. shutout. Exactly. And I'll tell you something else, too. How about this for Sean Couturier? Right? In the last eight games, he's has, what, four goals and, uh, what, four or five assists? For eight or nine points or something like that, or nine points for something like that in the last eight games for for Sean Couturier. So uh, d he's just quietly, you know, you don't hear much about him, but he just shows up on the score sheet yep. and, you know, nobody talks about him, you know, but well, there like he Jamie is. Like said on Twitter, even with missed games, you're probably going to have to value him for the Selkie, and you have to see what happens there uh, when it comes to that voting by season's end. That's still a while away, but we'll have to see. I agree. I can't even, can't even disagree with that at all. Not even but at all. As it goes for today, I think Sanheim played amazing, making that great play off the boards for Coot's first goal. Obviously, we had a great play by Lawton. Ghost even admitted he meant to go bar down, but he ended up getting it through the wickets on a great play there as well. But what are your final thoughts on this game? I thought it was one of our best through and through game. JJ kind of jokingly said, but was also serious, it was our best game since the return to play, basically. Um, yeah. So that could be the case. We played a good game through and through. Just got to limit the giveaways. Other yeah. than that, it was we a perfect game. Minutes. What are your final yeah. thoughts? Those are we, mine. Yeah, we played 60 minutes. This was the first time we actually played 60 minutes of hockey. Okay, we had great passing. We didn't make those. We okay. We did have a a couple of a dumb, few born. Yeah. yeah, but 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 okay. Uh, there's been quite a few guys that have missed some time that are now coming back. So you're going to have a couple of missed passes. You're going to have a couple of those things where not everybody's going to quite be on the same page. But here's the thing that I see is a bit of a difference. And and this was pointed out today during the game. 
there's a shoot first mentality now that seems to be yeah. rolling through the team. And this is something that we have utterly been clamoring, screaming, climbing the walls for is to shoot the puck. That's exactly what we've been doing in the last three games. We've outshot each team in the last three games. And that right there, I think, is what's helped the Flyers become more of an impressive team over the last couple of wins. And I think JJ pointed it out in our in our um, our quarter mark show. And, and I'm going to have to agree. The Flyers were starting to click right before the COVID hit. And I think now as you're starting to see some of the guys come back, I think you're starting to see you're going to see that click move forward I again. Agree. No, yeah. I agree. I think the big thing is you got that shot mentality. And I think having the youngsters come up kind of helped to instill that because if you look at Scott Gordon's Phantoms team, they have a shoot first mentality. We're having exactly. some of the guys like the shoes go the other world. Kasha only played one game, which I didn't agree with, but it happened. Uh, right. But you have guys come up and have a shoot first mentality. But even Andrea and they instill came up that and played and bring two that games and better. shot, you know. Yeah. So, yeah that kind of brings some energy as well. And that kind of got the guys going a little bit more, pep the energy up. So I think this was one of our best uh, through and through games though, uh, for the Agreed. Philadelphia Flyers. Yep. Agreed. And also for people that don't know, check out the Phantoms game tonight. If you're also AHL fans, which is at seven tonight Ooh, yeah. against the baby penguins. And also please check out flyers, nitty gritty and all their great content, steelflyers.com for all our great content on the great steel flyers website. And also the other two sites I write for overtime heroics and pub sports radio. You can check my Twitter out at JJ Boric 26, his at steel flyers 52 for Joe Boric steel flyers. This has been the sports fanatic news grittiest take post game show or three, nothing shutout for moose. Yay, Let's bring that anytime, flyers. anywhere back into Buffalo tomorrow. Go flyers. Get that sweep tomorrow. Peace out everybody.